Welcome to this quick guide to trying out SCORM Next. Next, we will take a tour of the tool to upload content, create a connector, register a client, and grant licenses. Finally, we will launch the content remotely from an external LMS. Step 1. The first step is to upload your contents to the SCORM Next repository. To do this, access the Content Repository section of the main menu. If we press the Upload Content button, a wizard will guide us through the process. We chose to create a new folder because we didn't create any folder yet. Then we enter the name for the new folder. Now we press the Continue button. In the dialog box that opens, we can upload SCORM 1.2, SCORM 2004, and XAPI packages, as well as videos in MP4 format and PDF documents. We click on the Select File button and we chose the file we want to upload. Once the file is selected, click Upload File and wait. At this point, we can continue uploading more content or continue with the next step, which will be to create the remote connectors for these contents. Step 2. In the connector section, we can create the remote connectors of our contents to distribute them to multiple external LMS. We press the new connector button to let the wizard guide us through the process. We choose to create a new folder because we didn't create any folder yet for our connector. Then we enter the name for the new folder. Now we press the continue button. In the dialog that appears, we must choose in which format we want to create the connector. Here we must select the same format as our contents. For example, if we have uploaded SCORM 1.2 content and we want to include it in a connector, we must choose to create an SCORM 1.2 connector. Once the format has been chosen, we must fill in the internal code or reference for this connector, the title of the product, and optionally its description. We can also specify the number of training hours and the price of this product. This information will then be used in the customer portal. By pressing the Save button, we will automatically access the content editor for this connector that we have just created. In the dialog box that opens, we can see the category tree of our content repository. We select the folder we created in the first step. In the right panel, we select, for example, the MP4 video, and in the lower right, we select the video element. Finally, press the Add button, and we will see our first content in the connector. We press the Add Content button to continue adding content, and in this case, we select the SCORM content and the particular element, SCO, of that SCORM content. Now that we have configured the content of our connector, press the Exit Edit Mode button to finish editing the connector. Step 3. To grant access to external LMS to our content, we must register those LMS in the Client section. Click the New Client button. In the form that appears, we need to provide the reference or internal code of the client, their name, and optionally, a description. Next, we must decide whether to use generic connectors or connectors specific to this client. Generic connectors are based on the URL of the client's LMS and are the easiest option as they can be shared with multiple clients. If we know the URL where the client's LMS is located, we should select the Use Generic Connectors option and enter the most generic part of the URL in the origin field, for example, campus.welcomenext.com. If it's not possible to know the URL of the remote LMS or the URL can't be used to distinguish it from other clients, for example, Cornerstone, we must choose the Use Linked Connectors option. In this case, we don't need to fill in any URLs for this client. Finally, in the Geographical Zone drop-down, we can select the area in which our client is located to serve the content from the nearest location. Click the Save button and the new client is added to the list. Now, a wizard will then indicate that this client does not yet have allocated licenses. Step 4. We click on the Yes button to continue. In the dialog box that appears, we can see our folder structure in the Connectors section, where we have all our connectors organized. We select the folder and locate the product we created in a previous step. We mark the product and we enter the number of licenses we want to allocate for this customer in the selected product or products. We must also specify the duration of the licenses and, optionally, we can specify a deadline from which no user will be able to access the selected product or products. By pressing the Add button, we can verify that this client already has access to the connector we created earlier and that it has the specified number of licenses. Step 5. We just have to download the connector for this product and this client. 
In the license list, we select the product we have just added and we press the Download Connector button. In the panel that appears, we can download the connector in several formats, multi-SCO, separate files, or with data anonymization. In our case, we will download the connector in multi-SCO format. Step 6. The next step is to upload this connector to a SCORM-compliant LMS such as Moodle. To do this, it is essential to use a different browser than the one being used with SCORM Next, otherwise, we will lose the session in SCORM Next when accessing the content from the remote LMS. Once we have accessed the LMS as administrators, we create or update a course and upload our newly downloaded SCORM connector to it. Next, we go to the course and access the first element of the connector that we have just uploaded. We can see how the content is displayed directly from the LMS in a completely transparent way for the user. Now we return to the browser where we are working with SCORM Next and press the Reload button located at the bottom right of the screen to update the list. Here, we can observe how a license has been consumed and the number of available licenses has been reduced in the same way. This concludes our quick guide. We hope your SCORM Next test is successful. If you have any questions or issues regarding SCORM Next, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at welcomenext.com. We will be happy to help you.